hers is the place to be. Farm living is the life for me. Hi, everybody. It's Big Anklevich here. Uh, yeah, I'm just practicing for uh, the opera that I'm in uh, called Green Acres. No, I was being stupid. Sorry. Um, yeah, it's me. I'm back. Uh, Anklecast has been uh, kind of dead and gone for a bit of a while. It pod faded away, pod faded out. Uh, but now it's time for it to pod fade in. Um, because, I don't know, I, I've been feeling like a long time, for a very long time, that I need to get back to it. Maybe I just had to let my shame of never uh, finishing, or starting for that matter, my novel uh, fade away so that I could come back and not, you know, be able to talk about things without being too worried. I don't know. Uh, anyways... Uh, I'm back. I I have thought about doing the show a lot recently, but there's been also a lot of crap that has gone on in my life uh, over the last year that has kind of caused a lot of problems. Um, and yeah, I mean, it was stuff that I had to deal with, and I... I I don't know, Rish, I was talking with him the other day, and he was mentioning that uh, he loves to do his uh, Rish outcast now because he feels that it's just like free therapy. You know, he can talk out all the BS that goes on, and, uh, you know, it's, I don't know, like writing in a journal or something like that. He has it in his mind that nobody listens to it anyway so it doesn't matter and he can just say whatever the crap he wants you know even if it's uh something really embarrassing and you know something he doesn't want to admit to normally uh yeah he uh, he'll talk about it on this podcast and he just feels like he's free to do so and, and no one will uh say anything it's funny because he talks about how he never hears any comments or anything about that about his show. I wonder if he would freak out if he did start getting a lot of comments and suddenly be like, oh man, there's people listening. I can't do this anymore. <laughs> I don't know. Um, we've actually been talking about putting the uh, whole catalog of Doomsteef materials onto our regular main feed. So you would get, you know, your Doomsteep, but also that gets my goat, ankle cast, outcast, and, and even the podcast that dares not speak its name. It dasn't. Um, yeah, I, I wonder how, what that would work, uh, uh, w if that would work for Rich Outfield once he uh, realizes that maybe a few more people than usual are listening. If you suddenly clench up and be unable to fart or speak um anyways yeah i'm in the car on my way to the grocery store i'm being the good little husband and uh taking care of the uh grocery list that my wife made up and then we were gonna go grocery shopping last night but it got late and when we were trying to go our son freaked out didn't want to be left at home alone with just his older sisters and brother. And so my wife wound up having to take him up and kind of lay down with him to put him to sleep. And he didn't go to sleep well, and it took a while. And by the time he got to sleep, my wife was also asleep, so we didn't go last night. So now here I am, going to get groceries on my own. Hopefully I don't blow it. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not as skilled at grocery shopping as, as she is. I do it a little less often. Although I do have a little added uh, skill set on my side because I used to work in a grocery store, so I can find things in a grocery store pretty good. 
as long as I can figure out what that thing is, my wife does tend to want some of the odder uh, foods that are harder to come by. And then I've got a daughter who's decided she's vegetarian. And so, you know, you buy a hot dog for dinner and that's one thing, but now I have to get also vegetarian hot dogs. And let me just tell you, they don't keep those with the regular hot dogs, which would make too much sense. Instead, they're all the way over at the far end of the uh, vegetable area, you know, right where they have like the cactus pads and crap like that. You can get your your tofu dogs or what, I don't even know what they're made of. <laughs> I wonder. That's one of those things you gotta wonder about. I mean, I guess you don't really know what a hot dog is made out of either. It's probably, I mean, it's well known. The, the joke is what is well used that it's lips and assholes that's in uh, hot dogs. But yeah, I don't know <laughs> what the heck's in, a, in, the, in the vegetarian hot dog. I don't know if they're tofu dogs or what. Uh, just some kind of synthesized thing, probably. I don't know. Anyways, um, yeah. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, but yeah, over the over the last year or so, had a lot of issues going on. Um, well, I'd like to talk about them all, owing to the free therapy thing, but. Unlike Rish, there's there's a lot of people uh, that are very close to me that um, I could cause big problems with if I talk too openly about the issues that I've been going through. Um, my wife, of course, being one of them. Uh, I think it's highly unlikely that she'll ever listen to this show but if I were to say things um, about our relationship that uh, could cause problems um, but one thing I can definitely talk about and this is uh, something that happened to me uh, at the start of this year uh, when the when the new year dawned um, I wanted to lose weight uh, I weighed 311 pounds that's no not clothes involved that's just me that weighed that uh, I would weigh myself on the way into the shower and that's how much I weighed uh, which is a lot of pounds. Uh, it's a good hundred pounds at least overweight. It's funny because I was looking at a, uh, a thing that tried to tell me what my ideal weight was. And they had like five different types of formulas or whatever. It's like in the McKittrick Cooper uh, version. You should weigh, and they, they were, there was some pretty, I think 160 was, I think that was the lowest one that it told me. See, I'm six foot one. Uh, so at six foot one, you're gonna weigh more than uh, shorter people. Um, it's just the way it is. Uh, all that extra bones and muscles and whatnot. Uh, come with weight but it was trying to tell me that I, my ideal weight was 140 there was another one that said like 160 uh, one that said like I think the absolute lowest one of ideal weights was like the BMI said that I could weigh anywhere between 140 and like 189 um, uh, yeah, I, I think I, my goal was, is 200. 200, I think I would be really skinny, but I would also probably look pretty good. Um, 
But yeah, I don't know how I could ever get down to one of those ideal weight kind of things. And everybody knows that those things are too generic, too uh, vague. You know, they don't take into account the dozens and dozens of factors that are going to determine somebody's weight. Um, you know, some people have bigger bones and smaller bones and uh, all that kind of stuff. And I'm not fat, I'm just big boned. Uh, but I have been under 189 before and yeah, let me tell you, there was a time where I was really, really skinny and I had a friggin' pencil neck. It was just unattractive. I looked at the pictures of myself and went, holy crap, how does my head even stay up? It's so big up there on that tiny little neck. Um, anyways, uh, I weighed 311 when the uh, new year dawned, the, when they rang the bell. Um, and I thought, I need to lose some weight. And then I did nothing to do so. I didn't start eating better. I may have started eating slightly better, but I don't think so. But I started losing some weight anyways. Uh, I started coming down and I, and the weird thing was I ate, I probably started eating worse. I would eat lots and lots of things that were bad for me. Um, candy and I was drinking soda every day at the dollar store they have the 20 ounce bottles of Mountain Dew Code Red which is one of my favorites and also they have the 20 ounce bottles of Mr. Pib Extra and I'm like Rish I love Mr. Pib Extra that stuff is so good Dr. Pepper Plus you could call it I mean it's it's a general Dr. Pepper flavor but it's like sweeter and just makes me happy um but doesn't anymore anyways uh that's that's a little uh foreshadowing for you so yeah I, I would get those i would swing by the dollar store like every morning and i'd buy like two bottles of code red and one of pib extra and i would take those to work and i would drink those throughout the day so i was drinking at least 60 ounces of soda and oh, I like to do this thing where I'd take the pib extra and I'd stick it in the freezer and get it super super cold and I'd even let it freeze a fair amount and then I would uh, pour it out into a uh, a mug that I had with a straw and drink it and <laughs> I did this so much and and of course when you you know you freeze it the the matter has now changed from liquid to solid, and uh, that entails some expansion, I think. I don't know if it expands or doesn't. I'm not really a scientist. I know the gas expands. Uh, anyways, it, it doesn't fit in the bottle as well, and so when you open it up, it starts spraying like crazy, and so I would have to like stick it just I'd open it, it would start going spraying everywhere, and I'd stuff it down into the bottle, or the, you know, the, the mug bottle thing I'm talking about. Stuff the top of the bottle down in there and just let it gush out for a while until it got down to the point where I could take it back out and remove the lid the rest of the way. But I <laughs> made such a mess of my edit bay by doing that. How many times did I spray soda out all over the desk and everywhere? And um, what a dumb thing to do. But anyways, I was doing this every day. I would get three bottles, 60 ounces of soda. And then sometimes since I was in the cash register lane and they had candy bars there in the dollar store they're even less than a dollar they're like 80 cents so I'd be like oh well sure I'll have one of these too and <laughs> there was this 
woman that worked at the dollar store and every now and then she would be there when I would come in and she would see my stuff thrown out there and she'd be like, oh, all right, breakfast of champions. <laughs> and, <laughs> and that would, yeah, give me pause enough to hang my head and think, oh, what a loser you are, Big Anklevich. This is your breakfast of champions, you piece of crap. But then I would keep on doing it, and I would keep on doing it, and I, I was kind of out of control, seriously. I was eating like uh, all this stuff was going away. Um, another foreshadowing for you, little did I know, it was. Uh, <clears throat> because, uh, yeah, I kept losing weight despite doing all this stuff all this sugar and all this candy and all this I would have pizza and I would go out to fast food burgers and I was doing all this crap all the time and still I lost weight pretty soon I was under 300 pounds and I was so proud of myself wow I have lost weight I am so good but I also was a little worried because I knew that I hadn't done anything to lose this weight. And when you're losing weight without doing something to lose weight, uh, that's, uh, that's a red flag for a real problem. Um, I used to go and donate plasma at... Uh, the plasma clinic and they do a screening process on you every time you come in where they you know prick your finger and they put your blood into a little thing and see what your plasma levels are to make sure you're uh, able to donate they weigh you and they uh, I don't know they do a lot of stuff anyways but they weigh you and if you get on that scale and you weigh like 10 pounds less or five, I don't even remember what the level is. It's not even that high. But if you weigh less than, you know, a certain amount less than you did the time before, then they'll be like, okay, you weigh this much less. Uh, what's going on? Is that something you did on purpose? I mean, are you trying to lose weight? And I actually set off that alarm once or twice when, uh, when I was donating plasma because I was trying to lose weight and I was actually successful once or twice. But, um, but yeah, the reason that they're doing that is because you lose weight uh, and that's trouble. That means something's going wrong. And uh, so... I knew something was probably going wrong, and I was a little worried. Um, and on top of drinking 60 ounces of soda, or more, I mean, sometimes I would get those, and then I'd still go out and get another one. Sometimes I was drinking 80, maybe even 100 ounces of soda in a day. On top of all that, I was unbelievably thirsty all the time terrible thirsty I I was dying like my mouth I, I felt like I I don't know I I'd taken a whole bunch of talcum powder and just tapped that thing into my mouth and uh, you know I, I just taken a cup of flour and put it in my mouth and then spit it back out I mean that's how dry my mouth felt all the time it was awful. It was almost like it is right now, doing all this talking. Uh, once I talk enough, my mouth starts getting pretty dry, but my mouth was like that all the time. And so I, on top of all that soda that I drank, I would fill up my water bottle. I have a 32 ounce uh, Contigo water bottle, and uh, I would fill that thing up and drink that thing through at least twice in a day so I was drinking like 200 ounces of water I would 
I would have to pee so much. Just insanely. I, I mean, I was peeing every five minutes I drank so much. And, you know, I told myself, hey, that's, that's normal to pee that much. I mean, look at how much I'm drinking. Of course I'm peeing that much. Uh, so I just kind of, I, I looked at, I knew that peeing a lot is a symptom of something. But I also just thought, you know, I, I figured the people that peed a lot because they had that something, uh, you know, they didn't have a, a good reason for it. It wasn't because they were drinking a lot. It was just because their body would always need to pee, uh, even though they didn't have much to pee or something. You know what I'm saying? Like they'd go, they feel like they need to pee, then they go to the bathroom and then they just dribble or something, and they'd be like, "Oh, why did I have to do that? That was dumb." And then they'd come out, and then they feel like they'd have to pee again. That's what I thought uh, was what that was all about. So I didn't consider it as a uh, as an issue for me. Um, there was one other symptom that I exhibited strongly. Now I can't I can't think of what it is anymore because it's actually been a while. Um, but anyways, one time I was out with Rish, and uh, we were doing our normal podcasting thing, and we took a break. And we went to Walmart. Uh, Rich is always looking for toys that he can sell on eBay. And so we go to Walmart all the time and see what they have in stock. And if they got something that's worth buying, Rich will buy it. And always when we're there, we usually go to the bathroom and take a pee. It's kind of one of the breaks that we take in the middle of podcasting. And so... Uh, we were doing that. We were at Walmart, and I had to pee again. And I, I don't know. What I probably did was, like, peed when we first walked in the store. Then we walked all the way over and looked at the toys. And then I probably peed also on the way out of the store. Or something like that. I don't know. And, and he made a comment about just how much freaking pee that I am endlessly peeing. And I thought, oh, you know... I probably ought to look up what the symptoms of diabetes are, because I know that peeing a lot is one of them. Uh, what else are they? So while Rish was in line buying his toys, I pulled out my phone and I looked up symptoms of diabetes. And a list came up and my stomach dropped. I looked at that and I thought, oh that's, I, I have that, oh crap, it's too late now, you know, I uh, procrastinated losing weight and taking care of myself for too long, and here it is, it's upon me, unexplained weight loss, uh, extreme thirstiness, a lot of peeing, that kind of stuff. Uh, there's one other, and I, I wish I could think of what it was. But yeah, being tired, not feeling good, lethargy, that kind of stuff. I kind of had a little of all of it. I, I, I always felt like crap. Um, now at this point, I had lost from 200, from Sorry, from 311 pounds all the way down to 285 pounds, more or less. And, uh, yeah, I guess what that comes from is a thing called ketoacidosis, where your body is not getting the sugar that it needs to function. And so it breaks down your fat so that it can use that to function. Of course, unfortunately, what it tends to do is break down that fat into sugar, and then it can't use it still because of the diabetes, and, um, you know, it, it, you're losing weight, but not because of something good. 
and it's usually a, a really poor way to lose weight and as soon as the sugar comes back you tend to gain all that weight back and then some it's it's what happens when people uh, do like Atkins diet and do the absolute no carbs thing their body goes into ketoacidosis and uh, it's kind of like the, the famine mode that uh, our bodies have evolved to uh, deal with famine and so you know they start breaking down the fat but then as soon as the the calories and the sugar and all that kind of stuff becomes available again it starts packing that stuff away for the next famine and um, anyway so that's how I'd lost like 30 pounds um, was by way of my body stopping its correct functioning and going into a uh, messed up mode yeah, I was tired and I felt like crap all the time. So I went, um, I, I got on the phone and I made an appointment with my doctor. And uh, I told them that I thought I had diabetes. And they set me up and I, I want to say that it was Tuesday probably that I called in and they set me up for an appointment on Thursday. And so I had a couple of days and I thought, you know what? <laughs> this is how effed up I was at this point. I thought, you know what? I'm not going to be able to drink soda anymore because of diabetes. So I should, you know, like, it's my last chance. I should, you know, live it up while I still can. And so I freaking kept, I went to the dollar store again. And... Um, I bought a whole bunch of sodas and drank them like crazy those last few days. Uh, which, you know, I mean, lucky, luckily I'm not dead because I was probably close. I don't know how, what happens, how high you can go uh, before it becomes really, you know, deadly. Because, you know, I was high for a long time. I mean, this was for months. I w it was March 17th, St. Patrick's Day, that uh, my appointment was for. And, you know, I first noticed issues starting, you know, January 1st. So that's three and a half months. Or is it two and a half months? I guess that's only two and a half. Because January, February, and half of March. Uh, two and a half months that I was living like this at least i mean i don't know what exactly you know where exactly it was that uh it started in it could have been longer but i'd been living like that for a long time and it was bad and then so i did that for a couple of days and then wednesday the night before i had to go to my appointment um, I talked to this friend I have at work who is diabetic. She was type 1. She's been diabetic her whole life, more or less. Uh, although she's way younger than me. She's like in her 20s. And uh, I think it was like middle school, which is like, what, 12 or 13 or something. So it wasn't really her whole life because we'll say half of her life. Because she has had such a short life so far. <laughs> but anyways, yeah, she's been dealing with it for, you know, 10, 12, 13 years, something like that. And she had, uh, you know, the little testing, blood sugar testing kit. So I asked her if she would test my blood. And she's like, oh, yeah, sure. Uh, come on over. Uh, when you get a second and we'll check it out and so I went over she tested my blood and the blood sugar testing thing uh, all it said when she ran my blood through it beeped and it said high so I had high blood sugar what does that mean well let me uh, just kind of 
Um, explain it to you, I guess. A normal blood sugar. And I know it's, uh, apparently it's different in different countries. They use different measurements. Because my sister-in-law is diabetic as well, and she'll test her blood, and, and it's like a six. Uh, and that's how they use it in Canada. And now a six in the United States, you'd probably be dead at a six. <laughs> because a normal blood sugar is between 70 and 130. Um, so, yeah. Anyways, so a normal, we'll just say that normal is between 70 and 130. Uh, and, you know, when you've just finished eating, you've had your carbs and stuff like that, you can go all the way up between 150 and 180 without it being too dangerous. It's still a little high. You want your blood sugar to kind of stay more even and not uh, shoot up like that. So uh, you try and eat more often and, uh, you know, less carbohydrates with each meal, etc. But anyways, uh, her thing just said high. So what does that mean? Well, she told me that her blood sugar tester goes up to 600. After it gets to 600, then it just, you know, that's basically what they say, off the charts. And it just says high. So my blood sugar was above 600 when she tested me. And, yeah, she looked at me and said, well... At least, uh, you know what's going on. <laughs> Sorry. Um, and, yeah, that was kind of scary. She actually came back to me later that night. She's like, you know, I'm actually pretty worried about you having a number that high. Um, I I know you have an appointment in the morning, but I think you might want to just try going by a like an Instacare or something like that, so that they can shoot you with some insulin. Because if you're that high, you really you need to do something to take care of that, because that is just dangerous. And again, I I I don't know if I was being stupid and that I what I did was very dangerous, but I was like, I have an appointment in the morning. I'm not going to go tonight and in the morning. And so my uh, solution was that I wouldn't eat anything from that point on. Uh, I only drank water for the rest of until the next morning. So that my blood sugar would come down. Uh, but at least uh, I was scared enough to actually you know do that to, to not eat anything it's, it, I was I it had been communicated enough to me now <clears throat> to know that hey it's not like hey I, I'm not gonna be able to drink soda starting tomorrow so I better drink some more better live it up while I still can thing is that I already had it it was already too late and I finally was figuring that out so I didn't do that I went into the doctor the next day and yeah they diagnosed me and they said yeah you're you're uh, in what we would call a diabetic crisis uh, we got to give you insulin right now we can't let you leave this place without some um, and they gave me all the stuff that you need and they talked to me about it and he told me I needed to see a whole bunch of different specialists. I had to see a uh, dietitian. I had to get my blood drawn so they could do tests on it uh, and figure out just exactly what kind of diabetes it was and so forth. Um, what other ones? I had to go see the uh, eye doctor. Oh, that was the, <laughs> I had forgotten about that. That was my final uh, symptom that totally uh, gave it away to me. Maybe uh, some of you guys saw my Facebook posts on this, but out of the blue, my eyes went to shit. I couldn't see anything. I couldn't read. Everything was too blurry. And I had to go and get little reading glasses from the dollar store. And I thought, oh man, I'm getting old. And I was so bummed about getting old 
Turns out it was worse than getting old. I was getting diabetes, and that's why my eyes were going blurry. And uh, it cleared up for a little while, and then it came back much worse. Uh, and I needed like super strong glasses to be able to read. And uh, I think it had just, had it cleared up? I don't think it had, I can't remember at the time that I was diagnosed. But anyways, I had to go see an eye specialist to see just what kind of damage had been done to my eyes by the diabetes that had gone unchecked for all this time. Um, I got a referral to see a foot doctor just to make sure there was nothing wrong with my feet. And also I wanted to get uh, this foot problem that I'd had for a long time cleared up so that I could exercise and maybe lose some weight. Um, so I started going to the foot doctor as well. Just, oh man, I doctor's appointments out my ears suddenly. Uh, and yeah, the first thing that they did was they said, here, here's your testing kit. You got to prick your finger and test your blood every day. And once you get down, oh shoot, what was it? I want to say once you got down under 200 uh, was when I was allowed to, they told me I had to keep upping my insulin until I got down under 200 and then I could stop upping it. And uh, yeah, it felt kind of like a bit of a whirlwind that uh, first appointment. You know, they kind of brought me in and told me a whole bunch of stuff. Afterwards, I thought, man, I should have brought my recorder and just recorded all this stuff because I don't remember enough of it. That always happens to me at the doctor's office. The doctor's like, blah, 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 And he goes on and on and on. And then, you know, you're supposed to somehow remember all those things that he said and and do them. And, uh, yeah, so I don't know if I remembered them all, but I sure did feel overwhelmed. And, yeah, I, I after that was all over, I went out to the car and... I sat down in the car and I kind of cried a little bit. I just kind of sobbed there. It, it was hard to take. It, it was a big change and it was, you know, I thought I was upset when I was getting old and so my eyes were going. Uh, and yeah, this diabetes thing was a much bigger, uh, omen of death, I guess you could say, as opposed to just getting old. Um, I think they say that diabetes in general takes like 15 years off the life of a person. Uh, and you know, I'm sure that you can be the outlier in one direction or the other, actually. You know, it could take 40 years off if you're stupid and you don't care. Um, and it was, it was tough. It was really hard to take. And I knew that my life, uh, had completely changed. And, you know, it's, it's tough because human culture is based so much around food. So much around, you know, we all get together and we have a meal together, or we have a drink together, or we, you know, all these things, suddenly, you know, I couldn't just do what I wanted. I couldn't just have a drink or have any old meal or just do whatever. That went away. And I thought about, uh, all the things that I was going to have to deal with in the future. And I have to admit, I had a really, really hard time with it. And I just kind of cried about it, just sobbed a little bit about 
what I'd lost. And, I mean, it obviously could have been worse. You know, judging from what the girl who tested my blood said. I mean, shoot, I could have been dead. I uh, was really pushing it. Um, but yeah, I just... All the things... You know, the chances of me going blind are really extremely high compared to what they were before this happened. The chances of me having an amputated foot someday, you know, they're high. And when things like that happen, it's like a snowball, you know? Things just start getting worse and worse and worse and worse. And, um... Yeah, I don't know. I was really upset. I was really uh, beaten down when when that finally came across. And I looked in the mirror and just thought, you know, you only have yourself to blame, you piece of shit. Fucking pigged out like a fucking piece of shit your whole life. And now you're paying for it. Here's your... Here's your just desserts. You did all this stuff and, and now you're you're reaping the whirlwind for it. And uh, yeah. so not only was I upset, there was that kind of self-loathing there and there was the confusion. I did the confusion. I didn't know what to do. Um, I went to the uh, pharmacy after my appointment and uh, I had to pick up a bunch of prescriptions and get my te stuff to go with my tester um, and I found out like all sorts of issues going on you know I go and they're like oh you don't have a prescription for the testing strips and so I'd have to call my doctor and get, you know, this prescription thing, pres you know, every little thing has to have its own prescription, and it's all really expensive, especially the testing stuff, man. I remember actually talking with somebody at work just a short time after that, you know, because my doctor says, you know, I, I think that the stuff that I've heard of them working on with stem cells, uh, could really likely uh, result in a cure for diabetes within, you know, a short time. And I talked with this guy at work about that, and he was just like, they probably have a cure for diabetes already. And they just, you know, are covering it up because then all their money goes away that they bleed out of these people for their endless diabetes... Uh, medications and you know all the testing strips and lancets and etc etc that everybody has to have because it's a chronic thing that you're endlessly having to uh, work on and you know these, these people are living high on the hog because of all that money that comes in for all that stuff they don't want to let that dry up and go away it's like you put out the the cure for diabetes and that kills the goose that lays that golden egg. Maybe the cure for diabetes makes you a bunch of money, but eventually that uh, goes down to almost nothing and, and all the other money you used to make is gone. <sighs> anyway, um, yeah, so it was tough. So the next several weeks I was scared to death. I was scared that if I ate anything with sugar in it, basically I was killing myself. It was, it was like anything that I had was, you know, it was like playing roulette, Russian roulette, uh, you know, pulling that trigger and checking to see, okay, is that the, the chamber with the bullet in it? Uh, oh, not this time, you know maybe next time and that's that's the way I felt uh, things would be and so I ate no sugar at all 
absolutely nothing. And, uh, you know, there was times, like, I went out with my wife. My, my friend came up to visit from Sacramento, and we went out, and uh, we went to this place, which I used to love. Uh, it's this place that just does cookies. And they have, you know, a chocolate chip cookie is my absolute favorite dessert. I could let everything else just, you know, dry up and float away as long as I had chocolate chip cookies. But now I couldn't have that. I couldn't have anything, you know. And, and we went to the cookie place and everybody got themselves a cookie and some people got the cookie ice cream sandwichy thing and others just got some cookies and and they all sat down and had their cookies and I sat down and had my nothing and I talked with them and uh, tried to pretend like I didn't feel like utter shit but uh, I did what I felt like. I felt like I couldn't participate, like I was afraid of. You know, everything's built around food. All social interactions built around food and drink and hardly anything else. Uh, you know, my family gets together once a month. All my uh, sisters and their families and etc. We all get together and have a dinner together. That's what we do. We don't get together and do anything else we get together and have a dinner. We've never gotten together and like, I don't know, gone to the amusement park or gotten together and uh, went swimming or uh, gotten together and went for a hike in the mountains. We don't do any of that stuff. That's not what people do. The one thing that everybody has to do is eat. You know? Some people don't like to swim. Other people don't like roller coasters. You can't get together and everybody do something, but you can get together and everybody eat. But now I'm the one guy who can't get together and eat. I gotta look at everything on the table and say, well, let's see, I can, I can have those vegetables. I can have, you know, I don't know, it was, it was, it was rough. Um, the weird thing was when we went to smart, or we went to the cookie place, um, one of the people that was there with us, uh, she was now type 2 diabetic. But she got herself a cookie and ate it. And I don't know if she felt weird because I just talked to her about being diabetic and how hard it is. And I feel like I'm, you know, can't eat anything sugar. Like I'm going to die if I do. And then she sits down and eats a cookie in front of me. But that was an interesting thing. That kind of gave me pause, made me wonder, what does that mean? Um, um, but anyways, I went to all my various appointments. Uh, by the time I saw the eye doctor, my eyes had totally cleared up. And uh, he told me that there was no lasting damage and I didn't have to come back for a year. I did need a slight prescription uh, for reading. Um, but it's not something that I really need need, if you know what I'm saying. It's just, it's a really light prescription and I do fine without it. I don't even notice anything being really blurry. Um, So as of yet, I have not gotten that prescription filled. I haven't gotten any glasses. Um, I still have my old ones, so you know I could use those. Uh, but anyways, uh, yeah, I went to the nutritionist, <laughs> and uh, they had some interesting stuff to tell me and the, the what they were saying they were talking about how I needed to have carbs uh, I needed to keep my blood sugar up uh, I'd just barely been able to bring it down 
the point that I went to see them. I got under 200. Uh, not too far, you know, a couple weeks later, I was down under 200. And so I could stop bringing my insulin up and my blood sugar kept going down and down until it got to like normal levels. And so I started lowering my insulin shots that I was doing. Uh, and I, w I was doing just fine, b but I'd never, you know, even come close to having to worry about low blood sugar. And they would talk to me and they'd say, oh yeah, you gotta watch out for the low blood sugar thing. Cause uh, you know, that's the thing that kills you. You know, if your blood sugar gets too low, you, just, you pass out and you die. Um, and I'm just like, yeah, well, that's not my problem. I'm obviously a high blood sugar man. Uh, they call me high blood sugar daddy. Uh, anyways. So I didn't, I didn't uh, think about that much. They did say, you know, that I needed to watch out for that. And I needed to make sure. And they gave me a number for my carbs that I should eat each day. And it was high. I was just like, seriously, you want me to eat that much carbs? Uh, that seems really high. And they're like, well, you know, I mean, if you, you can work it out, you know, keep testing yourself and seeing how high you go with however much you eat. And, you know, you can see if you need to bring it up or bring it down or whatever. And so, uh, so yeah, I, uh, I had that uh, in my head. Eventually, after six weeks, I went back to my doctor for my first checkup, and they did my A1C. Oh, I forgot to mention A1C from the first appointment. So an A1C is this test that they do on your on your blood apparently there's some particle in your blood I'm not sure what what particle it is white blood cells red blood probably red blood cells but anyways some of your blood cells they carry along I don't know a residue of the sugar or whatever that they've had so basically they test your blood and they can see what your blood sugar has been for the last three months so you can't you know I mean an A1C you can't just like right before you go to your doctor, you're like, oh, I'm gonna be good now. I won't eat anything bad for the next two days and my blood sugar will be down. You can't do that because the doctor can see what you're at for three months. So my first one, when I first went in and uh, was diagnosed, my A1C was a 14, which is extremely high, as you might have guessed. Um, it is, uh, I think a normal person is five point, five point six, something like that. I can't remember what it is now, but it's in the fives. A diabetic is a 6.5 usually, a six to a 6.5, something like that. Uh, and obviously I was way above that because, um, yeah, I, completely not been treating it. So my blood sugar was super, or my A1C was super high at a 14. So when I came back, all the, the nurse actually said, oh yeah, we're, we're, uh, we're taking bets to see what your A1C is gonna be. Because they figured it'd still be pretty high because someone that's way the, off the charts isn't just gonna turn things around. But then when I told her what my blood sugar had been at, she was like, oh, well, shoot, maybe I need to change my bet. Um, but anyways, uh, my A1C at my six-week appointment was a nine. Um, so that's three weeks or six weeks of being really good and, of course, six more weeks of being really bad. You combine those together and they came out as a nine. Uh, and they were kind of surprised. They said I was doing really good. That was uh, something that they were uh, really uh, excited about. Um, there were some other things that were interesting at this appointment. Uh, I discovered that I was in fact a type 1 diabetic and not a type 2. So when I looked myself in the mirror and said, you piece of crap, you brought this on yourself, 
I, it turns out I didn't really, because type 1 diabetes is when your stupid immune system goes haywire and decides to attack your pancreas and, des and destroys its capability of making insulin. Uh, whereas type 2 diabetes, which is the one that uh, fat people like me usually get, um, that's the one where you become uh, desensitized to your insulin uh, and your body doesn't, isn't using it correctly anymore and you have to take a pill that uh, gets you to use your insulin um, instead of taking insulin itself. Your body's still making it, it's just not using it. Whereas uh, for me now, it turns out my pancreas is not making insulin like it's supposed to. It's in the process of shutting down and not functioning. And uh, that was worse news, I guess, when it comes down to it. I mean, it's kind of nice to know that I, I didn't bring it on myself, but what that does mean is it's not going away. You know, a lot of people will talk about type 2 diabetes, you get on a diet, you take care of yourself, and you get down to being skinny, and all those symptoms of diabetes go away, and you don't even need the medicine anymore and you just have to kind of monitor yourself and make sure it's not coming back. That's what can be done to a type 2 diabetic, but a type 1 diabetic, that cannot be done. That's something that, you know, the, the stem cell thing, this, this mythical cure that I'm sure I'll never live to see, uh, that is the only way that, uh, you know, that can be fixed if it ever comes to be at all. So it's not going away. It's something that I'm going to live with forever, no matter what I do. If I lose weight and stuff like that, I mean, that'll make me more healthy. But it won't make the diabetes go away. And what I'm at right now, I'm in uh, what one guy I, I know who also has this issue. Um, it's the honeymoon phase. So, uh, you know, my pancreas has not been killed off, hasn't shut down. I've got the antibodies in my blood that are guilty of attacking my pancreas. So they're there and they're doing their job. Uh, they're destroying my ability to produce insulin. But uh, so far, that hasn't happened all the way. Um, it will eventually, probably, and yeah, I'm, it's kind of like the the quote from from Mal on Firefly, where he says, "Everybody dies, Tracy. Someone's carrying a bullet for you right now. Doesn't even know it. The trick is, die of old age before it finds you." Yeah, so that's me. Uh, there's a bullet out there with my name on it, and uh, maybe I can die of old age or <laughs> something worse something that will make me die younger before it gets there. Who knows how long it'll take. Um, my doctor did put me on this medicine that's called Glyburide. Um, and what this medicine is for is uh, people like me who are in the process of uh, losing the uh, ability to create insulin. And, uh, you know, it's for people who, you know, their, their pancreas is only making a little, or it's kind of stopping what it's supposed to do, it's shutting down, and this drug stimulates your pancreas to, uh, to create more insulin, to, to keep making it, right? So he gave me that drug. And I went home and started taking that.
So this glyburide stuff, uh, it was interesting. I mean, uh, I started taking it. And uh, the next day we went out and worked in the garden all day, right? Which I swear, the garden is so far from cost effective if you count in the amount of time you have to put into it. You have to really love gardening for it to be worth it. Uh, because, man, it's a lot, of a lot of work for a few vegetables. And we even have a pretty good sized garden that gets us a lot of vegetables. And that's the worst part, too, is that we wind up not even eating half of it. But anyways, <coughs> we were out working on the garden, trying to get it in shape, uh, get it going for the summer. And I was just feeling weird. And uh, like every time I would bend down to pick something up and then stand back up, uh, you know, I'd get lightheaded and feel like I was going to topple over. And I just kept doing that and doing that. And after a while, I started wondering, is, is, you know, what, what is going on? And I looked at my hand, and my hand was shaking. Like, I couldn't hold it still. It was just shaking when I held it up and looked at it. And I thought, uh, I need to go in and check my blood sugar. And so I went in and I checked it. And I think it was a 56 or something like that. And I was like, holy crap. Uh, that's low. I got to do something about that. And so uh, I, I looked around the house. I mean, I wasn't prepared for this. Um, so I just grabbed whatever sugary thing we had. I want to say I grabbed a like a nutty bar uh, that uh, my wife had bought for the kids, like for their lunches at school or something like that. I grabbed some of those and ate them, and then I found some juice and drank that. And uh, a little while later, my blood sugar was back up. And so I went back out to work. And pretty soon, I started feeling weird again. And I came in and checked, and I was back down at like a 63 or something like that. And I was like, holy crap. So... At this point, I'm like, you know what, I'm, I'm, you know, it's my chance. So I got in the car and I went to the gas station and I bought myself like a code red and drank that. And I was like, oh, I haven't had that in a while. Oh my God. Uh, which brought my blood sugar back up for a little bit. And I told my wife about that and she was just like, whoa, you need to stop taking that medicine and, you know, get yourself under control. And I was like, mm, I don't know. I couldn't call the doctor because it was Saturday, so he wasn't there. Uh, he wouldn't be answering, wouldn't be telling me anything. Well, maybe I could have. I don't know. He probably had some kind of emergency line or something, but <clears throat> I didn't anyways. Um, I did take that pill one more time on Sunday, and again, my blood sugar dropped, and so I went back to the gas station and got myself, got myself something naughty to uh, get my blood sugar back up and uh, and when I finally called the doctor on Monday he told me to stop taking that glyburide stuff uh, and just stick with my regular pill so I did and pretty soon my blood sugar went back to normal and, and basically stayed normal as long as I was eating properly my blood sugar stayed where it was supposed to be. And, uh, yeah, I mean, that was good. Um, but it gave me a whole new worry. I hadn't worried at all about being low before. I just figured that was something that, you know, was for other people, not for me, because I was always high. And, uh, yeah, now I had a new thing to worry about. And I started, uh, I, I talked to that friend of mine at work who tested my blood the first time, and she actually handed me a bottle of these glucose tablets that you're supposed to take. It's one of those things, it's like one of the fastest things that, that will get your blood sugar back up the fastest. Um, 
and now I had this to worry about, so I started worrying about that all the time, about ever going low, because uh, being too high wasn't really a big thing for me. I'd, I'd kind of gotten it over under control. I'd check my sugar every morning when I first woke up, and it was right where it was supposed to be. And I think since then I've kind of, I, I've worked on making sure that I don't go too low. That's the thing that I worry about because I know that, you know, having high blood sugar means long-term damage, I guess. Uh, whereas low blood sugar means uh, immediate danger, you know. Um, so I've worked on, you know, keeping that up instead. And I think I've fallen back into bad habits. Um, and I bet my blood sugar is high often and I just don't know it because I, I don't check it as much as I should. Um, but yeah, that's another thing that I worry about now. Uh, I actually have uh, my sister got married to this guy who was diabetic. He didn't take good care of himself and he was having all sorts of problems. He probably would have had a foot amputated uh, because of the, just, he wasn't taking care of himself. He was not in good shape. But then one day he just didn't wake up. He went to sleep and, uh, he was low and he died in the night. My sister woke up and was unable to wake him. So that's a different thing that I worry about now. Uh, I'm told that usually, uh, as long as you haven't become too inured to the whole uh, process of being low, your body will wake you up if you're low. You'll wake up and you'll be thrashing in your sleep and you'll be, you know, having issues and your body will let you know that, hey, you need to eat something or, you know, do something. To get yourself out of this uh, this problem, <clears throat> so as long as I don't get become too used to it, uh, but that's just another thing for me to worry about. Yeah, the the likelihood of me going blind is high. The likelihood of me losing limbs is high, feet especially, I guess. Uh, the likelihood of me just dying. Uh, is high and uh, yeah that's that's I guess something that I get to live with now from here on out and I can't just push through things I can't be like I was as a younger man where I would just you know oh yeah I haven't eaten for a long time but you know oh, oh well I'll get by because you know my body's gonna regulate itself now it doesn't do that it doesn't regulate itself like it should and uh, I can't just be like the regular man, the t stereotypical man who never goes to the doctor and never worries about his health and then dies when he's young because he had a tumor and he never checked it out. But um, I can't be that guy because, uh, yeah, I already know I've got an issue. So, yeah, that is, that's my saga of uh diabetes i don't i'm still not out of the woods i don't think i've gotten used to it um i've grown used to being able to to, to eating as i should but you know all the time that i've spent eating no sugar it m it did make a difference for me like you would think you know i was earning i guess that weight that i lost when i wasn't trying by eating no sugar after that but i stopped losing weight I have at least I haven't gained the weight back but uh, I've got a long ways to go to be healthy and uh, it would make a big difference because my doctor's really worried about my cholesterol and my blood pressure and if I could lose a lot of weight that would probably bring both of those down significantly and yeah you know, maybe I wouldn't have to take uh, a pill for each of those every morning if I took care of that so, yeah, I have that to worry about. That's uh, kind of what's been going on. Or I should say that's one of, one of the things that's been going on in my life uh, over the last year since I last 
did an, an ankle cast anyways and spilled my guts <coughs> before you all. There's a lot that needs to change in my life. Um, when I was at the grocery store today, and I'm done with that now, right? You could probably tell because it's not loud anymore that I am now at home and uh, not driving in the car. But when I was at the grocery store, I was buying the food. My wife and, and my oldest son and I are all trying to do a healthy diet. Uh, we're going to do it all together. We're, we're the ones in the family that need a little help in that area. Uh, my uh, three youngest, um, either they eat healthy or they at least haven't started getting chunky yet. <laughs> There's some that they don't eat healthy. I know that much. I think they just don't eat enough. Like my youngest one, he, I, that kid, man, I swear, you give him food and he takes a nibble and then he's done. And uh, my youngest daughter, I'm not sure what the deal is with her. She doesn't eat a lot, I think. She eats crap when she eats, but she doesn't eat a lot. So she's nice and skinny too. Uh, but yeah, us older folks, uh, we need to work on that. We need to... Uh, to get going on that so I bought a whole bunch of vegetables and a whole bunch of fruit and a little other stuff um, so we'll be working on that for the next while um, we'll see how it goes I guess the next uh, one of these podcasts I can tell you how that's working out see if I'm getting my weight down and whether I'll be able to get off of the some of these meds that I've been on. Um, but yeah, uh, I, I'm gonna do a few of these. I think uh, maybe the maybe the next ankle cast I'll talk about the state of the ankle cast. I'm gonna do a few of these where I just talk about what's been going on for the last year while I've been avoiding it, <laughs> and uh, and once I finish with those, I will. Uh, I'm planning on putting some stories on here and, and, and really getting this, this podcast going and uh, using it uh, as something that could be fun. Uh, some of my st I'm going to put some of the stories that I probably wouldn't feel comfortable putting on the regular show. And you guys can talk with me about it and tell me what you think of these stories. Um, you know, they're stories that I'm not... I don't know. I, 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 there was probably a time where I was proud of them, but... For one reason or, or the other, I'm not anymore, and uh, you guys can talk to me about what you think I need to do to improve as a writer, and I'll, I'll talk about writing in some, some of the uh, later casts, too, some of those down the road, and uh, but yeah, I'll be back soon. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this tale of... Uh, adventures in doctor's offices. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I'll see you again with, with maybe some more stuff. Uh, thanks for listening, everybody. Have a good however long it is until I come back again. Hopefully just a week or less. Uh, I'm not planning on making it be uh, nine months again. So we'll see you then. Thanks, folks. Bye.